Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tachyon by Azahar. The game plays two to five players, takes roughly about 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Tachyon, you're going to be playing as a time agent, and you are going to be tasked with a very important mission. You will need to avoid the environmental crisis coming in the future. With the help of a supercomputer that will be attempting to solidify your ability to move between the past and the future, Future, you are going to attempt to change the past and present in order to secure our future. And you're going to be getting missions from the specific computer entity. You're going to be moving through the different seasons as well as the different time periods, whether it be the Renaissance or whether it be the technological age or the prehistoric era, and you'll be basically completing certain things, whether it be something like giving the battleships to the Vikings that discovered America, or helping Leonardo da Vinci, uh, da Vinci build the time machine or build the uh, flying machine and so on and so forth. You'll be given certain missions, you'll be using certain um, unique time transparency cards, and of course you're going to be utilizing each of your own unique time machines as you cross the different continents. And then of course the person who is able to fill, fill the most missions, getting the most points after 12 missions has been completed, will win the game. However, time has its own variables, and if you're not able to complete your missions in time, and there's going to be a cause of a bunch of different crises in time, uh, you can basically lose the game to the game itself. Basically, the world will hit an environmental crisis if you're not prepared to protect it. Anyway, let's talk about the setup of the game. Then I will go ahead and show you how to play the game, and finally, my review of Tachyon. So currently here we have a setup for three players, but the game pl does play up to five players. First, to start off, you will go ahead and take the board and place it in front of all players within reach. Then give every single a player board and five tachyon, which they will be utilizing as currency while traveling through time. Additionally, you're going to set up these cards here, and these cards will help you throughout the game. Set four face up in the middle of two decks of 10 that have been shuffled. Then, of course, also have the mission cards shuffled and set face down in the space spot that it has been assigned for. Additionally, you want to give every single player a time machine, which will be placed on the Terra Nova space on the board. Then go ahead and place the three markers of the game. The first one is going to represent the season, the second is going to represent the era, which will be placed on the environmental crisis, and the final one is how many missions. You'll need to complete 12 of them, so this whole little tracker thing is going to need to go all around the board in order for the game to end and somebody to win. Players are going to be placing out their characters or their time agents on a landing space at one of the continents in the middle of the board, and each continent is going to have three different unique technologies in each of them randomly assigned to them face up. Speaking of technologies, you'll also have the, uh, the unique technologies associated with Nova Terra. Place three of them in the three slots and all the rest next to it. And of course, the environmental technology will be associated with Antarctica, which will also be face up and not shuffled. And people can just come here and gather them. Another thing you'll have to note too is you'll need to set aside any additional tachyons uh, that will be used uh, next to the Time Museum or anywhere within reach of all players. And then you're going to have this Paradox uh, Agency token, which will be placed on the slot that it has been assigned as well as the six-sided die in the middle slot. After you have done so, make sure that you have all the rest of the tokens set aside and shuffled as well. You'll be gathering more of them as the game goes on, so you'll need to be within reach of all players. Then, each player is going to take the two mission cards dealt to them, select one of them, discard the other into a discard space, and you'll be able to begin the game Tachyon right now. Tachyon is fairly complex and has a lot of options, and those options are represented by moving your time machine, moving your characters, gathering resources, and then securing a specific spot in time and possibly even a specific season, turning in those re specific resources at that specific time, and of course when the card needs to be turned in, collecting those victory points based on what you're able to turn in, pushing the mission marker forward and getting to 12, thusly triggering the end of the game. However, there's another end to the game as well, and that is if three specific uh, locations have been completely paradoxed out, or if every single location has been semi-paradoxed out, meaning that you can no longer go to them. The only location you can always go to is going to be Antarctica. Now, the beginning of a player's turn is pretty simple. Every single time machine starts at Nova Terra, and there are seven locations on the board that you can visit, but you can never visit the one that you were previously at. So for instance, if it was Red's turn to start first, and Red has his uh, time machine in Terra Nova, and his or her character in uh, Africa over here, then Red will need to start off by moving their time machine. Let's talk about the different areas you can move them to. 
The three over here, the wormhole, low gravity, and a black hole, will allow you to move time and space. You can use your move your seasons, or you can move your specific different eras, and then the wormhole will just allow you to move one of your characters. Uh, the first one is the black hole, which lets you move time in a counterclockwise direction. You get two points for the black hole. Points represents the amount of times you can move your pieces across the board. And there's two that you can move, the eras and the seasons. So for instance, I can move one season and I can move one era. That would be my two points. Or I could simply choose to move two seasons or I could simply choose to move two eras. Additionally, whenever you move a season, these cards will move as well. If you move them to the right, the cards will then trigger moving to the right, and new cards are then going to come out from the opposite side of the deck, kind of creating a type of a current conveyor belt, allowing you to see new cards that you can purchase throughout the game. Uh, and of course, just moving the arrows and are, are going to generally be able to help you with your missions. So the black hole not only lets you get two points of uh, movement as far as the seasons and the arrows go, but additionally, you can spend these wonderful tachyons to gain extra points of movement up to as many as you'd like, provided you have tachyons. The next thing that you can choose to do is move your character or your time agent one space adjacent to him from the area he is currently at. So for instance, if Red choose to move to the black hole here, he or she could then get two points uh, to move their seasons or arrow tracker. And then after doing that, they can choose to move this board, they move their, the board here if they move the seasons or not. And then they can move their character to a landing zone in the center area adjacent to him or her. After that, they can collect one resource, which is the technology. Perhaps it's going to be environmental or some type of sun sign or sun sign or like um, ammo or weaponry or whatever. And when you gather these resources, based on the time period that you're in is where you are going to go ahead and place your specific resource that you gather. So for instance, the red player would have moved from here to here. It's going to be in the environmental crisis and this resource. So you'll take this resource and place it in the environmental uh, space, oop, technically on their board. And uh, that is how you're going to be gathering resources for your missions. Each of your missions is going to specifically say the type of resource you need and what era you need it to be in. Additionally, once you've gathered those resources based on their tiers, you can then turn them in and you're going to need to turn them in based on the era, possibly the season and a specific location that you need to be in in order to turn this mission in. Once they have done that, they have moved their time periods, they have moved their character and gathered their specific resource, they'd pass turn. Another thing is low gravity, which functions exactly the same as the black hole, but instead of moving counterclockwise, everybody moves clockwise, and you'll be using the same actions. Wormhole is functionally the same thing, but instead of moving the seasons and the eras, you're just simply going to move your character, gather a specific resource, and then pass the turn. Uh, another thing to note, too, is whenever another player goes onto the same space as you, so for instance, if Green were to want to go onto that space the same as you, you are going to push them off. They're going to have to give you a specific little resource called the Tachyon, and then they can take that specific action. Anybody who's on the landing space is basically the first player there and must not be pushed off. If you get pushed off, you pay the person who is at the specific landing space. The other area is going to be Terra Nova on this side of the board. Terra Nova will push all players over to Terra Nova, which is like home base, and players can then bid on gathering these nice tech resource tokens. The first player will get an option to buy one for three, and then four, and then five, which will then be replenished. So you can get a maximum of three, one for each of the three players that are playing, and at a higher cost after each one has been bought. Over here, you have the Paradox Agency. Well, as resources deplenish from each of the different continents, you're going to start to notice this Paradox Tracker moving around the board. And once it gets across the board past the die, you'll roll the die. And when that happens, a Paradox is going to trigger. The die, based on the number, will place a Paradox token in one of the continents, which will then close off a continent, unallowing un 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 you to utilize it. So, if you place your character here, you can spend two Tachyon, and then you can remove a marker from one of the continents and flip over the tokens and thus have that location utilized once again. However, if two Paradox tokens get placed on a continent, that continent is locked, no longer will be able to tra be traveled to, and can no longer be unlocked by the Paradox Agency. So be aware of that, and as that die rolls, things get more and more complex. Speaking of more complex, whenever you turn on a mission, not only do you move this marker, getting one step closer to those 12 missions, but you will also have to roll the Paradox Agency die, thusly potentially creating a minor and major paradox in a location. 
Next location over here is the mission console. You'll pay a tachyon draw to these missions, select one of them, and then try to turn it in before the end of the game. If you wait to the end of the game and you still have missions left, you're going to lose points for those missions. However, if you turn them in beforehand, you're going to score points based on the different texts that you have gathered and uh, turned in. And for instance, each of them is going to provide you with bonus points. To turn a mission in, you only need to complete the first one, but you can complete each additional one as long as you had completed the previous one to score additional points. And of course, you'll put it face up in front of your board because there's extra bonus points for having uh, completed missions with unlocked territories and different territories at the end of the game. And then the final area, which is the Time Museum, which lets you do three things. One is you can gather a tachyon. Two is you can turn in a resource that you've gathered that you don't actually need for one of your missions to get a certain number of paradox. And the final thing is you can actually turn in resources based on the cost of gaining them and instead get that resource for that specific era in order to collect uh, and use for your tier two or three abilities on your mission. But you can only do it for your tier two and three, not for your first one, because that's what's needed in order to turn it in in the first place. After you have uh, finished taking your turn, the next player will get a chance to go. You'll simply just move your time machine to a location. You will then do what the location says, and you'll gather any resources or pay any costs, and you'll pass it along. And eventually what's going to happen is either uh, all these areas are gonna have a minor paradox, thusly locking them and the game will end, or uh, three locations will be completely locked out and thusly time will hit the uh, environmental crisis and you will lose. And finally, the last one is the only way you can win, getting the mission tracker all the way back to 12, thusly completing 12 missions, scoring, tallying up the points, and whoever has the most is the winner in the game, Tachyon. And that's the basics of how to play. There's a couple additional little things I want to talk about, such as you can buy these cards, and when you choose to do so, you'll be adding them from the closest deck and flipping them over. You can then utilize these cards uh, to ma manipulate time and especially their abilities on the board. This one here will let you move one tech from your player board to another age. So moving one from one age to another, which will help you in turning in your missions. All these cards are very beneficial, but they cost Tachyons. Another thing to keep track of is always remember to move these boards left and right, or these cards left and right, based on when you move this little season marker and depending on which way you move it. Some cards are going to cost specific tech, like this environmental tech or this I, don't know, I think it's called like technology tech. Um, and in order to gather those, you'll need to go to the specific locations. This one, when you go here, lets you spend one, um, one of these tachyons to gather one of these onto your board, which they have unique special locations. And they're also worth bonus points at the end of the game. And the only way to gather these specific ones is you'll have to travel here, in which case everyone will travel here and you'll start going ahead and gathering these guys by paying the cost at the bottom. Once the resources run out, they're out. And of course, once the resources in a specific continent runs out, you will then go ahead and move this little token here and you'll refill up the board. Of course, unless it's locked, which means you can't go there and you're unable to fill the board there or utilize any tokens there. Uh, well, that's basically the idea of hanging the game Tachyon by Azahar. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description, but first, let me give you my review. Tachyon is a mind grinder. It's one of those games where, yes, you have seven choices to make, but those choices will enact different choices and different things that you can do and gather and where to place them and when to place them based on what missions that you have. Some missions are easier. Some missions are more challenging. And of course, each mission requires you to gather a specific resource from a specific age. And you'll go from tier one to two to three, and then you're going to have to turn the card in based on when it needs you to turn it in. So you're basically con constantly moving time between eras, constantly moving time at between seasons as well, and then utilizing those seasons and time and era to turn in the cards for missions sake. Turning in missions produces paradoxes and removing resources from the board creates paradox potential as you kind of increase a little timer that moves around the board and eventually makes you roll the die. When rolling the die, you have to utilize the specific paradox agency space. It gives you victory points when you do do so. However, it's kind of pushing you behind as well, but protecting the board from basically making the game end. You must all work together to make sure that the environmental crisis does not happen, but at the same time you need to be selfish enough to make sure you get the most points by turning in resources for missions. And it's kind of a give and take in this game. It's a little bit co-op and a lot of bit uh, basically com com competitive nature, but, but you also are trying to kind of work on your own uh, strengths. You'll be gathering cards throughout the game, which we really didn't use all that much in this game. These cards are actually very beneficial, but Tachyon is such an important resource specifically when you want to go on somebody else's location and you may or may not want to rather give them resources to make sure you get the age and the time there that you want but 
I would want to use this, these more as I started getting more into like the complexities of the game, knowing when and how to use them. And I do like the idea of these cards moving from left to right as the age markers, or as I guess you call it, the, um, the, the season marker moves across the board. That being said, it's a little bit fiddly when it comes to that, because you're having to constantly keep track of moving these cards around as the seasons change. And while I do like that concept and it does work very, very well thematically, it can be a bit repetitive as the game progresses and you're constantly doing it over and over again when sometimes people aren't even utilizing the cards that are on the board here. Another thing to note too is traveling between continents is also part of the side movement over here on the right hand side of the board and it's very necessary. But as you gather more and more resources, things get a little bit more challenging because you are going to need to make sure that you do not spend too many resources in a specific area. And if you do, you're going to have to suffer the consequences of rolling that die potentially, pushing the game into more of a paradox type of game where you have to kind of deal with the computer and AI. Uh, altogether though, it's an excellent game. This is a like Euro meets kind of a resource collection type of a game. Uh, it's very, very thinky. And probably at the end or like the three fourth mark of the, of the game, you're really deep into it and you've got your turns all planned out and all of a sudden something goes a little bit awry. And that's all that needs to happen in this game. Uh, sometimes in other games like this, uh, you just can't, you'll just miss the mark. In this one here, it's like a, you can do the thing, but you're just kind of missing maybe one tachyon to move there because somebody isn't in the location. Or you can turn in the card, but you're not on the right season, even though you're on the right era, and you can't make it change the season because you're currently on the space that you need to be in order to move to the season. And so it's got that like, you're, you're really having to think and make choices in the game as to where and how you want to place your units and think ahead of time as well. The theme of this game works excellent. I feel very, very immersed in this game as I am playing it. I am attempting to make sure that the seasons and the eras kind of collide with exactly how I want them to be. And there's always these little small tears in time that kind of twist things around, all with the threat of the board coming to basically destroy you. This uh, is super fun. If you want a game which high in theme, and extremely thinky with a lot of choices, but overall pretty simple. Move your time machine, do whatever it says, pass turn, and then the three different the two different losses and one singular victory condition, um, you're going to enjoy this game. If you like time machine games, if you like a theme, steampunk theme, if you like the beautiful art in this game, this is something to definitely consider. It does get a little frustrating, it can be a little fiddly, but overall, Tachyon is an excellent game. I strongly encourage any player who likes time machine games and Euros to take a look at this game. Currently down below, you can pick it up if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tachyon. If you like this game review, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell notification button, and uh, check us out here with tons of good stuff, including live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, games like this, and more. Patreon members, thank you so much. A buck a month goes a long way, and we greatly appreciate it. It allows us to do more content for you guys. And of course, Moonshell Mermaid Game, Callie's game is on the boats on the boats and we're gonna have an update very soon for you excited about it even though the shipping is rather uh, extra extra expensive more expensive than we thought board games are not cheap when it comes to shipping guys <laughs> all right guys thank you so much and as always i look forward to traveling through time to prevent the environmental uh, era from basically destroying the world with you next time but but i want to score more points than you you know because otherwise what's the point of saving the world if i don't get all the credit <laughs>